regarding me now are the businesswoman Gina Miller, whose campaign forced the government to consult Parliament before triggering Article 50, and the Conservative MP and Leave supporter Bella Jenkins, who's also chair of the Public Affairs and Constitutional Affairs Committee. Welcome to you both. Mm. What do you reckon, uh, Bella Jenkins? I mean, I'm not talking about the rights and wrongs here, but the practicalities. Could Brexit be reversed? Well, um, from a political point of view, uh, this was a referendum which uh, the Leave campaign was, was always going to find difficult to win, and the fact that the Leave campaign won it uh, suggests that it's, it's an irreversible, the genie's out of the bottle. I mean, the idea that we could have another referendum and the country would vote to stay in, I think, is extremely unlikely. And um, uh, also, Parliament has voted very heavily for the Article 50 bill. Thank you very much, Gina, for making us do that. Actually, I think it's, 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 uh, it's firmed up the political direction. And um, it's certainly arguable that you'd need another act, act of Parliament to reverse that. And also, you'd require, the having triggered Article 50, you'd need the unanimous agreement of all the other member states and all the other member state parliaments. Um, I think this is extremely unlikely. I think we're, we're leaving on March in March 2019, and the question is what are the arrangements we're going to have when we leave? What do you think? Could it be reversed? Um, I think we know, don't know anything at the moment. We can't predict the future. But from a very practical point of view, why could it not be reversed? Because it would require, as Bernard quite rightly says, the withdrawal of the notification letter, letter and an act of parliament and the other 27 member states who agree. They have, in effect, said they, we would be allowed back in, if you remember the song, the John Lennon song uh, that was quoted by the um, president. And the fact is, we need to go forwards first. So I do actually think it is very destructive to now be talking about remaining. It was a democratic vote. It was supported by the MPs in Parliament. We need to go forwards to see where we end up. But at that stage, it must be logical that we vote on all options, including remaining. And at that stage, we would know if we could remain or not. I can't see how someone can say it is set in stone. One referendum sets everything in stone, because an election doesn't set everything in stone. We have other elections. Okay, so when you say we vote, who, who do you mean? I think it's got to because we have a representative you, democracy. You I MPs. think it's the MPs. I'm afraid I think referenda are destructive. We've seen the waves that the last one has caused. There is still division that's been caused by the last referendum. Um, and something so vitally important, I think it should be the MPs. Well, if you wanted to reinforce the narrative that the people don't matter and the political elites rule, uh, that would be one way of doing it. Uh, I think that would be very, very destructive. I think referendums and direct democracy is a, um, a relatively new part of our constitution, but it's popping up all over the world as a way of making decisions. I think referendums are here to stay. But you could argue, um, could you not? And the argue? idea that you reverse a referendum because you don't like the result. Uh, and, and actually, if Parliament, if, if Parliament were to set itself up yeah. into a position where, and there's a very practical point here, if we're going to conduct the negotiation effectively, it's, it's that we're going to leave. If, if, it's, um, if we might reverse that decision, you're immediately setting up a scenario where the uh, European Union will gain the negotiations in order to get the decision yeah. in Parliament but, but that they MPs, want. So that's not going to happen. Well, MPs have voted historically against public opinion on occasions. I mean, the capital punishment will yeah, be, but, will, yeah, will yeah, be yeah, one yeah. of but, but this is, this so, is an so existential question. You, no, no, no. And not like capital well, punishment. The, well, I mean, it's existential if you're at the end of a rope. Um, but uh, what I was going to say was, what about Gina's point that if there's going to be a meaningful vote at the end of this, that the options should be yes, not on these terms, and no. Well, um, I didn't vote for the Lisbon Treaty that put this Article 50 process into the, into the mix, right. but we're stuck with it. And Parliament has triggered Article 50 in the knowledge that we're going to leave. Article 50 is to negotiate. No, 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 no Article 50 triggered has triggered... Leaving. Well, can I just finish the point? Article 50 has triggered the process. We're leaving yeah. on, on the 19, uh, in March 1919. And I think we should concentrate on what arrangements we have in place for when we leave and if, we're, if there is a great danger, that I think the risk at the moment is if people are trying to make the deal too complicated, require too many concessions from our European partners, too expensive, then Parliament might vote against the deal and we leave without a deal. I think that talking about another referendum or remaining is far too... It, it's, it's not the time or place. I think at the right. moment, I at the moment, agree. what I totally Agreement. disagree... Right. No, no, what I totally disagree with you on is that we're leaving on in March 2019. 
Even David O'Sullivan the other day, uh, the EU ambassador to the US, has said that every day there are more and more complexities. We are not going to be leaving anytime soon. The reality has to be spoken to the public that this is so complicated, we will not unpick 43 years in 18 months. It is impossible. And until we start well, talking about transitional period, I don't know how we can move forwards. Well, we are talking about um, either an implementation period or even a transitional period. That's so we won't clear. be leaving in March No, no, but we leave, we leave on March 1990, and there may be transitional arrangements during the implementation period. I mean, that's quite clear. That's, we, we've been talking but, about but, it. But the point is, there are some people trying to make this as complicated as possible. It is pretty it complicated. Is well, there are, there are a great many tasks. None, none of the individual tasks well, on their own is particularly complicated, whether you're talking about aviation safety or civil aviation well, agreements or, or data protection or patent law. That, they're all separate tasks that need to be done. There are a great many tasks that need to be done in a short And they time. need to be done by but your I mean, deadline. The most important, they need to be done by your deadline. And the most they? important thing that needs to be done is about uh, mutual recognition of products and standards yeah. for goods and services. But for that, we actually only need the same kind of arrangements that the EU already affords 100 other countries with which it doesn't have a trade agreement. You know, well, these are sensible it things. It doesn't have open borders for the lorries with those other countries. Well, you go and look example. at Canada and the um, and, and United yeah, States, and they have a pretty open border, um, but they have a customs. No, but now you're talking about Canada and the United States. So, I'm, so, I'm, so, I'm so why, can't we, why can't we have the same kind of arrangements in Northern Ireland, for example, at the Channel Tunnel, to facilitate those arrangements? It can all be done. It can all be done, but it will not be done in the timeline that you are talking well, about. Because the Canada deal alone, look at how long that took. No, no, that, that wasn't about a free trade agreement. They've had, they've had a fairly open frontier yes, without a free trade agreement before they had the NAFTA. But there are legal status quo. Before any of that happens, we straight away know that there are already problems with negotiating the exit bill. You know, there is a very detailed EU paper that talks of 40 agencies and eight projects that mm -hmm. need to be funded. And what the EU is saying is that in their meeting so far, we have not come up with an alternative method of calculations. We are not putting forward a number. You know, they're baffled that we're not, we don't seem to be ready to negotiate the very fundamental part of the bill before we even get to negotiating what the package will look like in our future relationship. So we're stalling before we've even started. Well, um, the, the government isn't um, putting its negotiating position on a, up, on a, up on a website. It hasn't got and, one. Uh, it hasn't got one. And, the uh, EU it's is quite saying obvious, that. It's quite obvious that uh, the EU is exploiting that. And I think it's also quite clear that the government's had um, com communication problems recently in terms of presenting all this to the public and to the media. And that hasn't been well presented. And that's all got to improve. But yes, you're right, Gina. There's lots of decisions that need to be made very quickly. And uh, there's lots of implementation that needs to be done before 2019. But if we're not ready for 2019 and we don't have a deal, we're going to have to have lots in place. So we better be planning for no deal, in case there is no deal, in order to make sure that um, uh, we're prepared for whatever happens. And if we are ready for no deal, we're in a much stronger negotiating position. And to is that do a what deal. you think people voted for, a no deal? Um, it was always clear that we weren't going to have a comprehensive trade agreement, but um, are you telling me that the European Union is so cussed and so bloody-minded uh, that they're going to make the most um, obstructive um, no, arrangements between our two countries that they, they wouldn't do with any other country in the world? No, As no, I say, no, I, I most... Don't believe no, that, no, no, well, I don't well believe then, that. then have some faith that they're... Well, I think the European Union is, in the end, going to be quite okay, a sensible well, organisation. Well, and they're answer, going to want possible. sensible arrangements between our two countries, even if there isn't let, a comprehensive let, let, let trade let deal. I, I've always said that nobody wants a failing neighbour. It exactly. doesn't help the EU, and exactly. it doesn't help us. What I want is more, reali more realism about how, how complex this is. Because, you know, there's a trade meeting. Okay, there's a meeting today at number 10 with the business leaders. Mm -hmm. And from every meeting that I've spoken to, uh, from people leaving meetings or lawyers, so far mm. they've been saying there's a real lack of understanding of the legal and technical issues in different areas from the uh, government and from MPs. They're leaving baffled. Let's hope today at that well, meeting I mean, the business right. leaders so well, an assertion, that, that they get their answers. I don't, I don't no, it's believe not that assertions. is correct. It's I, not assertions. I think it's talking with people who are leaving these meetings. I think meetings. a lot of people who are leaving those meetings are unreconciled Remainers or, or certainly were Can Remain... We stop talking remain about Remain well, It's just really a minute. not helpful. They were Remain supporting interests and they are anxious to protect their interests. Of course but they it, are. But um, I, think, I think, the, I think what the government... The country. I think That's what the government, why they're I think what the government would do well to do is to explain how the economy and the uh, country will develop outside the European Union, present more of a visionary yeah. approach. Of, uh, of the opportunities that exist, will exist for us as we leave the European Union. I, I mean, Jim, I, I just want to ask you one question. We take the whole concept of 
Britain remaining in, in the European Union, given the vote in the referendum, do you really think it's, it's a possibility that we could get ministers saying, OK, we're sorry, we're going to turn up to monthly meetings in Brussels again, Prime Minister's going to turn up every few months uh, to meetings, uh, we're going to make significant uh, payments into the EU budget. Do you really think I, that I could think there's one thing that we have to accept, and everyone has to accept this, that whatever happens in the future, because I'm not blessed with some MPs who seem no. to know what's going to happen, is that we cannot go back to the relationship we had with the EU, mm -hmm. because that is something that people are unhappy about. There are lots of issues with our membership of the EU that have caused angst in the UK for many decades. And so if we were to remain, if that was an option on the table, it has to be a reformed membership. It can, we cannot be go out back. The core or... We cannot go back to where we were. I, that is but my what belief. kind of negotiation position will we have if we're simply not ready to leave? In March 2019. In most negotiations, if someone came to me at a business meeting and said, "Well, I'm already going to leave if I don't get what I want," that's not really a good way of starting negotiations. What? So you give them a veto over everything? Uh, no, you give no, your opponents, I wouldn't. No, I would negotiate. The I would negotiate. That, that, well, of course, we're going to go negotiate. We are negotiating. Right. Well, um, but uh, the, the, the more ready we are in March 2019, the stronger position we're in. And, and that's you still what, think that's it's a good idea. I still think it's a good idea. In the long term, yeah. this is a very, very good idea. And you still think it's because a good idea? Because most countries aren't in the EU and they do I very want to well. see the plan, as Bernard said. It, show mm. me the plan that, mm. of what's going to happen because mm. there is none at the moment. Okay, well, we may not you. see much plan because it's going to be a negotiation behind closed doors. Thank you both very Thank much you. indeed.